someone who's not fallen asleep is this lioness. She's wandering into the drainage just behind the damn wall. On a bit of a mission. Now we can follow, we can drive up in the damn wall and look down. But no other member of the parade is following. They're watching, but not following. <laughs> I think we'll stay with these members. And see if they decide to follow. It's just so lovely to have them here. But luckily we've got the infrared, Marcel came to the rescue, so it means we can spend the rest of the drive with the Talamati Pride. Talamatis are up, awake, wearing infrared now, thank goodness, and they're looking at Impala. Impala are right behind us. I don't hear them snorting, which means they may not have seen the lions. I don't hear any sort of commotion coming from behind us. And I don't think the Talamatis that we know of hunted anything last night, which means they could be hungry. If they do sort of go off into the thicket, we've actually been given permission to off-road in this area because we're high up. This is a high part of the Katina. And we're not down in a drainage line or a seep line. So if they do sort of hunt across quarantine, we can follow. They're definitely interested. Everybody's up. They're walking with purpose. It's sort of sunset time. We've lost too much ambient light to use our normal camera without infrared and without artificial light, which could mean crepuscular can be very difficult for diurnal animals. It can be that time of day where the eyes are just not adjusted and maybe the impala don't see them. <laughs> the subato male always just sits down. <laughs> There's nothing quite like an active lion sighting. Sleepy lions are gorgeous, but you know, it makes you feel sleepy when you're watching lions sleep. I don't know what they're going to do here, but it's very, it's very tense. They're definitely interested in something, and there are impala behind us. There was zebra on quarantine this morning, and this afternoon we saw them. I don't know where they are now, though. They're going right past the Moomin's house. The Moomin's are the landowners here. And that's what that fence is in the background. Which means they're about 300 meters away from our camp. If that. See, their eyes are glowing. We're not shining any lights. There's no spotlights or torches or anything here. It's just glinting with the infrared. And this is exactly why they are nocturnal. It's cooler. It's easier. They're not going to spend as much energy as they would if it was the mid-hot day sun. It's cool. Even I feel relaxed now, can breathe. And they're relying on this cover of darkness. Okay, it's not completely dark yet. The sun's not all the way down, but I mean, my naked eye is struggling. Humans, we don't have any specialized adaptations for crepuscular time and so day is our weakest time. We are diurnal and they can just slowly move through the long grass and prey might not see them coming.
See, they blend in. You've lost some of them already. You can just see their eye shine. But it has to be coordinated. They've got to get this right. the zebra are still in the same position. It's quite common that zebra don't move too far. That's a tricky question because, I mean, the ratio is skewed. You've got five adult females and six sub-adult females and only three sub-adult males. So, yes, the females do most of the hunting, but I would imagine the sub-adults are also active, the males in the hunting as well. But, of course, the five adult females, they are the ones with expertise. They are the ones that really... Is that one here, Simon? They're getting closer. Okay, I'm going to reposition because this, these two are after something. Are you ready? I just want to get round or we're going to miss completely what they're after. But yes, there's more females, so generally they do. But the sub-adults, both males and females, will be hunting at this age. They range in age between a year and a half and two years. Okay, this just gives us a little bit of a better view to see what they could possibly be looking at. But I don't see anything. Simon's going to scan with the camera. Okay, so hopefully something happens, but we're going to stay very close to the Talamatis and see if they get lucky. Positioned because the lions are moving. It's Impala. Male Impala. They're moving closer and closer, but they've not closed the distance yet. The distance is still far too great. They need to close it. I don't think the Impala know they're there. But in order to launch an ambush attack, they've got to be closer. This is the well, it's been a long time since I've seen a hunt on quarantine. See, this one's moving really slowly ahead, carefully. Can you still see the Impala, Simon? It's way off in the distance now, they've moved. It's snowing, everyone. <laughs> Imagine, it's only little insects. Jacob, other lions. I don't think any predator out here. I'm talking about the low felt who challenge lions other than other lions. Prides will fight, coalitions will fight. The males can be very aggressive with one another, especially if there's a takeover. But no other predator would challenge lions, except other lions. The biggest threat to any species, really, is a member of your own species. The biggest threat to a male leopard really is another male leopard. The biggest threat to a female leopard is a male leopard. The biggest threat to a hyena is another hyena. Of course there are other threats, naturally. But the biggest threat is a member of your own species. but they're slowly moving west along this fence line. The 
this is perfect hunting conditions for lions. Grass is long enough, but not too long. It's also open. Open, but plenty of area for coverage. Heading straight for our camp. They're obviously not going to our camp, but they're heading in that direction. But it's still early. They can walk all night. So it may be a case of they just keep walking until they find what they want. Quickly over to Pinda. Our pride has split up, which makes it a little bit difficult now. There's lots of vehicles wanting to see them, but just as we were pulling out of the sighting, we actually came across this lioness. They're going to hunt, whether it's on quarantine or whether it's a little bit to the west. They're heading in a westerly direction. I don't know, tomorrow will tell. But they're hungry. They're together and they're active. She's laid down low, but she's alert. She's not sleeping here. She's just keeping her body down to the ground. Now, of course, I, as a useless human being, cannot see anything. But generally, quarantine holes and pala, zebra, and wildebeest. So if the Talamatis play their cards right, they could definitely get a free meal tonight. That'd be so wonderful for the morning. But again, if it's an Impala... Oh, there's Impala! That's what she's looking at. Oh my goodness, these Impala are close. Oh, please don't spot. Rule number one is generally do not spotlight in a hunt. I apologize about that. These males have no idea. These rams do not know there's a lioness watching them. They're grooming, they're, they're just relaxing on quarantine. I have no idea what is going to go down tonight, but I have a funny feeling they're going to make a successful hunt. <gasps> she's up. She's stalking. She's going for it. She's going for it. She's getting closer. She's getting behind this cluster leaf. So, everyone, thank you for jumping on board. I, of course, will update you tomorrow. Good night.